Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we are going to be giving some background information on live loads. So um, if you recall, or you've watched some of my previous videos, we give a brief definition of live loads in one of my previous videos, but let's recap what it is. So live loads acting on structures are considered as non-permanent. So what that means is these are loads that um, could be acting on a structure or a structure needs to support these loads, but these loads will not always be present or maybe uh, the loads will not always have a particular magnitude. So that's fundamentally different than a dead load. A dead load is a load acting on a structure that's always present. Uh, pretty much throughout the entire life of a structure. But a live load, on the other hand, will not always be there. And so there are a lot of things that can cause live loads on structures. For example, let's write down um, some examples. Examples include traffic loads on bridges. So for example, you have cars traveling over a bridge. Well, in certain times of the day and maybe certain days of the week, the the uh, number of cars that are um, on a particular bridge is going to change, right? Um, for example, uh, in the morning time, 6 to 8 a.m. on a highway bridge, you're likely to have a lot more traffic that the bridge has to support compared to 1 a.m. on that same bridge. So um, those traffic loads, the loads from the cars are not always going to be there and they're definitely not always going to be the same magnitude on that given bridge. So traffic loads on bridges. Um, also loads supported by monorail systems and cranes. So for example, a monorail system or a crane system will not always have the same magnitude load acting on its structural system constantly for the entire um, lifespan of its existence, okay? Um, and another uh, very common example of a live load includes um, occupancy, okay? Occupancy of building structures. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, occupancy refers to basically people, the weight of people itself um, acting on a structure, in a structure. So if you have a school building or a hospital, you're not always going to have the same people with the same weights uh, standing in the same spot constantly, right? There's going to be certain times of the day, certain days of the week, um, maybe certain weeks of the month and the year that you're going to have more pe more weight due to people on a given structural system w within a building than other days of the year, okay? So that's what we mean by occupancy. So basically the load due to people occupying a structure. And of course, there's several other examples. I mean, we have examples of like partition loads. So that would be um, that would be another type of load that is non-temporary. Uh, furniture loads, if you, you know, have furniture um, in a building, you know, on the second floor of a building, um, that furniture is not going to, necessarily be there all the time or it can move around. So there's other examples too, but these are just a few of the key examples. And so our main reference, we can reference a couple of great sources to give us some insight on how to determine minimum live loads. So I'm going to say reference, I'm going to say for minimum design live loads, we can see the International Building Code, IBC uh, 2018, section um, live loads in IBC are coming from, I'm actually looking up the exact section right now, uh, 1607, okay, and ASCE 716, chapter Okay, so um, I'm going to refer mostly to ASC Chapter 4, although 
Um, you know, IBC is is kind of the over the the governing code. Um, that's kind of the default and takes precedence over other codes and standards. But um, ASC seven sixteen has a lot of details in there that I'm going to be referring to in this video and some subsequent videos. So um, one thing to be very careful about, I'm going to underline these IBC twenty eighteen and ASC seven sixteen. We're going to say read. We're going to say read footnotes and the small print carefully. So when you're navigating these codes like IBC, like AAC7, there's a lot of little footnotes, there's a lot of things in like eight point font. Um, there's a lot of exceptions to certain rules in these codes that you need to read carefully, okay? So when you're navigating these codes to determine minimum design live loads, um, read everything in the in that particular section and make sure you're not missing anything, okay? So um, what we typically do is we use use minimum design live load values, live load values when we do not have any other exact information on the live loads, okay? Um, also, these minimum design live loads, they, they present an absolute minimum uh, live load value for what you should be analyzing and designing your structure based on. So for example, just give, pull out some numbers here, if um, you calculate that you have a particular structure that has an expected live load of 80 PSF, and uh, but then IBC 2018 or ASC 716 um, says that, well, your minimum design live load for that particular type of structure with that particular occupancy is 100 PSF, then you can't use the 80. You have to go with the 100 PSF because, again, IBC and ASC 7 present minimum design live loads. So in the absence of information, you use those minimum live loads. But also, if your information is smaller than what ASC 7 or what IBC tells you you should be using for your minimum, then you need to go with uh, what the minimum value is according to IBC and ASC 7, okay? So, um, so that's the basic idea of it, all right? Now, um, when we are uh, investigating live loads, there are certain circumstances where you can um, reduce uh, a particular applied live load, okay? So we're gonna say on certain occasions, we can reduce minimum live loads. And again, this is uh, per, you know, IBC 2018 and ASCE 716, okay? So um, in ASCE 716, there's a handy little equation. It's in AAC 716, it's equation seven or 4.7-1, okay? And so uh, here's how it works, okay? Um, you can reduce, you can compute a reduced live load based on the following. The reduced live load can be computed as the following L as the reduced live load equals L naught open up parentheses 0.25 plus little c divided by square root of something called KLL times A sub T. Okay, now little c is a coefficient, it equals 15 for uh, English units. and is 4.57 for SI units, okay? Um, L naught is your unreduced live load, okay? Unreduced 
live load. Okay, and um, these minimum live loads can, we're gonna say C table, you can get it from a table in ASC 716. So this is um, table 4.3-1 in ASC 716. And there's pretty much the same table or almost the same table in IBC 2018. Um, so that's your unreduced live load. Um, a sub T is something called the tributary area, okay? Now, um, so the tributary area is the following. We're gonna say this is the area over which loading is transferred to a particular member, okay? Um, and then uh, we have this, this value called KLL. This is called our live load element factor. And again, this comes from uh, a table in both um, IBC 2018 and ASC 716. So in ASC 716, we're gonna say this is table uh, 4.7-1 in ASCE 716. And again, there's a table just like that in IBC um, 2018. So um, again, you need to be very careful. You need to um, read the quote fine print when using these tables. So for example, in ASC 716, um, when you look at table 4.3-1, when you're, when you're trying to determine an unreduced minimum design live load in table 4.3-1 in ASC 716, if you got it with you, go ahead and open it up and kind of follow along. But um, you'll see that there's the third column in that table that says live load reduction permitted question mark and some of those say no, okay? So what that means is if um, you are not allowed, if you're not permitted to have a live load reduction, um, then you can't use this equation, okay? Uh, so there's always some kind of note or indication there. And notice on a lot of those that say no, it says no and then open parentheses 4.7-5. So again, if you flip a page and you look at section 4.7.5, assembly uses, live loads shall not be reduced in assembly uses. So you gotta be careful. You can't just get excited and always use uh, this equation to reduce live loads. Now, another interesting thing about this, um, this equation is the following. If you take a look at either IBC or uh, ASC 716, uh, we have the following, um, uh, I guess, stipulation. If KLL times A sub T is less than um, 400 square feet, you cannot reduce that live load based on our equation here, okay? So your KLL times AT has to be bigger than or equal to 400 square feet first before you are even allowed to use this. Again, if you have a small KLL AT value, which is less than 400 square feet, you can't reduce it no matter what, okay? Um, there's also some stipulations um, in, uh, in section 4.7-2 or 4.7.2 in AAC 716. So let's make some uh, notes of that. Um, we can also say, <laughs> look at this, I spelled read wrong. Did anybody catch that? That's, I spelled it like the name read, it's R-E-A-D, <laughs> um, not R-E-E-D. But anyway, uh, you also need to take a look at section, C section, 4.7.2 of ASCE 716. So look at what um, it says, and, and if you have ASCE 716, I'm looking at the left column of page 17, right under the KLL table. 
it says L shall not be less than 0.5 L naught for members supporting uh, one floor and uh, shall not be less than point four L naught for members supporting two or more floors. So you always got to check that little stipulation as well. Um, again, that's why I say read the fine print, read all of the the uh, documentation and the and the side notes in these codes. Okay, so basically what this is saying is if you have a if you have a beam, for example, supporting one floor or a column supporting one floor, um, this right here, this 0.5 L naught is a lower limit on the reduction that you may be allowed to have. And then similarly, if you have a beam or a column, more likely a column supporting uh, two or more floors, um, L calculated from our equation here shall not be less than 0.4 for members supporting two or more floors. So again, 0.4 L naught represents a lower limit on on that reduced live load. So um, that concludes this video on our background information for live loads.